Hey guys, it's Alvin here. Today let's talk about classic. Not speculation or hope for certain things, but actually talk about all the hard known facts that are gonna come to World of Warcraft Classic and my opinion on the recent demo. Thanks to BlizzCon, 90% of our questions and worries have been answered, so let's organize all of that up. So first and foremost, when does it release and how does it work? Well, WoW Classic will function just as an extension to the current live version of World of Warcraft, meaning it will be integrated into your Battle.net account and have all of its features such as a friends list, contact support and connected to your live subscription. Meaning paying for WoW will give you access to both Battle for Azeroth or whatever the current expansion and Classic, effectively giving you two games to play. Because of that, it will also allow you to play live and farm gold for tokens and basically play Classic for free. But this also means that bans or any sort of trouble you can get on one game translates to the other. So be careful on those nicknames. So when does it release? Well, no hard date has been set, but summer of 2019 is a known date of release. Most of the hard work to achieve Classic has been done, because if you don't know, this Classic version is actually using Legion's 7.3.5 patch as a building block, and through a process that I'm not going to pretend to understand, it's kind of matching the old assets and art from the 1.12 version, and and then strip away all the contents that came since then. There's an excellent blue post about this if you want to geek out on it, link in the description. But that leads to another question, what version exactly are they building Classic in, or rather, what version are we gonna play in? Well, technically, we will be playing on a 1.12 patch, that's what it says when you enter the game, that's as far back as I could get all the required data, but that doesn't mean we're gonna have all the content of available from the start, because that's one of the last few patches, but more on that in a bit. Now, since Classic is using this modern client, it will allow certain things that some will be happy about and some that won't, such as better graphics. You will get an option to get the Classic Fidelity, of course, at the click of a button in the graphic options, but if you wish, you can get far better shadows, ambient occlusion, better lightning, textures, clutter detail to make the game look almost like live. Uh, the only setting missing was the view distance, most likely a limitation of the old engine or code. This also disables a lot of unique vanilla things, such as macros that allowed you to essentially play the class for you, so sequence macros, add-ons that change the client version, so add-ons that more resemble like mods, wall climbing won't be available as well, which is probably the saddest of them all, and of course, a lot of bugs that were in on vanilla won't be present as well. Uh, there are some bigger changes or additions for the classic version when it comes to trading gear and sharding. Now, the demo had full-on phasing and sharding, and I believe cross-realm as well. Now, classic will stay true to vanilla. Each realm will be unique. No cross-realm nonsense, and no shared action houses, no phasing, no group finder of any sorts. However, it was set for the launch of vanilla. Sharding will be implemented for the first couple of days in the early zones, which I can understand why some people will be upset about, but won't be permanent, and it seems a pretty fair way in order for the game to run well. Uh, this is just to allow a smoother launch instead of having hundreds of people all hunting for the same boar, potentially causing all sorts of lag and other issues. Uh, that said, it might be implemented in the future for low pop realms if it becomes an issue. Now, another big-ish change is on loot trading. So currently, if you get a loot drop and if it meets a certain requirement, you have two hours to trade to anyone in your group. That wasn't in vanilla, and that is something that will be present unless they change it back for some reason. Now, personal loot isn't a thing either. You go for master loot or the need slash greed system. So I don't really find it all that necessary for trading loot. I mean, I can see the appeal it can help a lot when there's a misgiven gear or when you mistakenly clicked need and you didn't want it, but I'll leave that discussion for you all to have down below. Now, there are a couple of more questions you probably have. The biggest one is what content patch this classic will start on? Is it progressive or is everything released at the same time? So all of the raids? Well, it will be indeed progressive content. The timelines aren't clear, but when classic is released, we will get access to Molten Core, Onyxia raids, Kazakh and Azuregos as a world boss or, or bosses and three Dire Maul dungeons. And for that, it might be like, 
whoa, Dark Maul wasn't present at release, and well, that's true, but WoW wasn't launched all at the same time in Europe, and Asia got it slightly later, so they're basing it on the March of 2005 release. As for the rest of the game, not sure, because there are certain small things like mounts. When the game launched, epic armored mounts didn't exist yet. It's just the same versions as the basic ones that moved faster, so not sure how things like that will work out, but overall, that would be stage one. Uh, stage two would be the release of Blackwing Lair, BGs, so Battlegrounds, and PvP Rewards, and Zolgrub. The time frame between stages, again, not clear, just that would be released when people are ready, uh, whatever that means. Maybe when a certain amount of people finished the previous content, maybe, even though content in vanilla never really died out. Uh, only in Wrath you had the idea of a new raid tier completely killing the previous one. Uh, back in vanilla, or even TBC, if you were just a newly started guild with newly dinged characters, you had to do most of the same journey as your original guys did back at launch. You had some catch-up mechanisms for sure, certain dungeons added, uh, certain raids or vendors, but still the main journey of progressing through all of the raids was uh, still there. Now, stage 3 would be a queue, so Ankirage, Silithus content, and the Green Dragons were bosses, so those that appear in various locations uh, throughout the world, like Feralas, Ashenvale, and yes, that means the HQ gate event happening in Classic with hopefully good performance. I really cannot wait to experience that for the first time. And Stage 4 would end with Naxxramas and the Scourge invasion. So basically almost the same as it was originally, and I much rather follow this progressive system or model instead of here's every raid and every content that ever exists in vanilla and go right ahead. Now, similar to the Dark all being there at launch on Classic, there's another feature they're taking from a later patch, and is the debuff count. So if you don't know, vanilla mobs, including bosses, had an 8 debuff limit, which means it led to people not actually using all of their abilities, like rogues cannot use poison and prioritizing some others for the good of the raid. Now, back then, this was an engine limitation, not really a design feature, but they are sticking with it. However, a later patch increased it to 16 debuffs, not 8, so what we are getting right off the bat is 16 debuffs in total, not the 8, so there you go. But yeah, that pretty much covers all the changes so far, I might have missed one or two, so do let me know, but I believe I covered the bases. Now, onto the actual demo and what I think about Classic as a whole, at least what we were allowed to test, which basically low leveling, and what you might expect and all the changes that you might find surprising coming over from live. Well, the first thing it will be apparent is just the nostalgia rush. If you played vanilla to Wrath, that is, and if you didn't play any private server to sort of muddle those waters. Now, I didn't play much of vanilla, mostly towards the end, and TBC, which most systems and features were the same, but TBC did add a lot to the game, but the core of it stayed mostly the same. So I still relate to a lot of things here on Classic. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is questing. Questing was very, very different here. Uh, currently, questing, especially in BFI, you have a lot of story. They are quick and clear, you go to a camp, pick up the quests, you do them, go back to it, move on to the next camp on a map, go to this certain area, do all the quests there, etc. and etc. Very theme park-like, very simple, very straightforward. It has been that way for years, probably since TBC and Wrath, more prominently found in Cataclysm and beyond. Now, Classic isn't that clear-cut, because a lot of the questing involves a lot of grind, and in fact, they are zones which you don't have a lot of quests in. Sure, they are great quests, and some even with some pretty great story bits, but most of what you're gonna do is pick up a quest and go to this area and farm mobs basically. Uh, either kill a great amount of them, like 15, 30, or kill them for loot, of which the drop rates are really low, forcing you to kill mobs over and over. Basically, it will amount to the same count as just the kill quests, or even more. Another difference is that for you to pick up quests, they don't even show up on a map. Not on a minimap, not on a big map. Now, this creates uh, pros and cons. The pros is that it forces you to explore the areas and zones, so you have to go out there and look for quests. You have to look around the camps and the overall area, and on that it adds to that exploration feel to the game. It makes you feel more immersed to it, but at the same time you are wasting a lot of time walking back and forth 
back and forth. And if you miss quests, it's actually quite bad because you won't meet the XP requirements of the next zones, and it forces you to just go out there and kill mobs, and certain thresholds throughout your leveling experience will force you to do that anyway. So you can see why over time changes to the questing was done. Now, another thing is that when you actually start questing, you're going to notice that the mobs and the threat that they present is rather large, because even for me, or most of you that can now play WoW relatively well and are experienced with the game and its mechanics, you still need to be careful because pulling two mobs by mistake or even willingly will put you in big trouble unless you a hunter or a lock due to the pet. You would simply lack the tools and power, if you will, to deal with those situations. You will just die sometimes, which causes two effects. One is that will force you to be more aware of your surroundings, every pool inside a cave or a heavily fortified area so full of mobs feels like a dungeon run, as you don't want to risk pulling extra mobs. If a mob is melee, ranged, has a pet companion, all of that will be part of your decision making while just out and about questing. What abilities you should use, do I have to wait for this patrol to pass by so I can be safer, should I pull further back? All of those decisions you're going to be constantly making when questing in Classic. So certain areas really feel dangerous and all of that once again adds to the feeling of feeling immersed in the world. You are far more involved in what you're doing, even if you are just a measly level 15, well level 5 or even 50. The other effect that this causes is that will incentivize you to group up and play with others, because one, mobs are only tagged by one player or party, meaning if an area is full of players, of which will happen a lot when classic launches, you might want to group up, not only to make it easier to kill those same mobs, but for your own sanity, saving you a lot of time waiting for respawns, of which they are quite big, and who knows, maybe we'll make a friend or two along the way to go through more adventures later, be a dungeon or another tough quest, adding to that a community feel of classic, because those same people that you encounter aren't from a weird phase or some weird realm, no, you see them here and you might come across each other later down the line. But in the end, yes, this is a very old style of questing, like I said, it can get really grindy and frustrating at times, so it won't be for everyone, but all of the rest that I mentioned does make up for it because being immersed goes a long way to make the grinds and the questing enjoyable. Another big change we'll encounter is once again the exploration field. Nowadays this is done by forcing you to only use ground mounts and not use flying for the first couple of months of an expansion and putting things like treasures to kind of force you to explore every nook and cranny of a zone. And I mentioned this earlier but you also have to look for quests as in the objectives that you need to do. That's how exploration is done in classic. But even when you do find them, you won't know where they were. I still remember most quest locations, and yes, you can and could use a Thoughtbot or Wowhead to look for them, but if you decide not to and you don't know the area, you're left to reading the quest log and go out there and try to find what you need to kill or get, and that will add extra playtime for sure will kind of waste your time with all the walking, but once again, another aspect that immerses you in the world and what you're doing, and again, it forces you to explore that same world. And this is from someone that already knows all of these areas, and I still felt pretty immersed while questing. Not only that, there's other RPG elements. A word, or well, a couple of words, wow, have been kind of forgetting. Role-playing game. Mobs are much tougher here, as I mentioned. So if you were caster, you really need to get some drinks to get some mana back because your spells are gonna drain you a lot. And or having a few stacks of foods and other supplies like bandages goes a long way. So after each journey of quests, it's wise to just go back to the base, sell what you got due to small bags in the beginning and prepare yourself for your next set of quests or adventure. Maybe if you are lucky, uh, equip a new piece of gear. Honestly, I don't know how it's more exciting to get boots with one single stat of strength to the current gear system in BFI. Now, the combat is another aspect that we'll see that yes, this is a really old mechanics in comparison to now. It is extremely slow, huge amount of downtime. I played a paladin, which is notorious to be an auto attack machine, and most of your time playing is staring at a screen watching animations play out. For the classes can be more active for sure and of course at max level will be slightly faster with all of your other abilities and better gear but nowhere the levels we have now because you're gonna have a threat as well you're gonna have resources like mana which are very
very very precious to take in consideration and not to mention all the misses resists that the mobs can do to all the convoluted systems and stats in the game like weapon skills and stats such as hit rating and all of that uh, combat is really really quite simple in comparison your main damaging ability sums up to one or two buttons that said you do have a lot of abilities to use at the same time for say a shaman you have tons of totems you can use for your advantage even at level 15 and if you are smart to use them in certain locations or situations it will make your life much easier but yeah at these low levels there's very little you can do don't expect to mash your keys or perform this complex ish rotations in order to dps Overall, this is a subjective topic, of course. The combat here is just suffering from something called time. Because at the time, at the time of release, reviews actually praised the combat of WoW for its combat flow, how fast and how actiony it actually felt. Remember, at the time, most MMOs had far worse combat systems, like really slow and very non-involving ones. So you will either like or not this combat system, but personally, I still enjoy it because when I'm fighting, I'm not just pressing buttons but i'm also thinking on what should i do next i'm looking at my surroundings to see if any mob is coming to attack me or hell a player i'm checking my hp values my mana to know if i'm safe to pull more or use certain abilities or if i need to use potions or eat or drink or just escape an area so you can find enjoyment it will just depend on who you are and how you play and how you're approaching the game and the last thing i want to touch on is just how the classes feel their design and the whole Whole progression. I missed the old talents, I really did. I mean, sure, they had a lot of boring things in them, but I constantly saw myself on my long walks from quest to quest, just checking the talent trees, seeing what awaits me at the higher levels, playing around with them, because you do have three of them. What talents should I pick? In what order, since some of them do require other talents to unlock? So all of that was really fun and such a huge change coming over from live. But sure, at max level, you might stick to the cookie cutter builds, but again, pros and cons. This is a far better system for leveling, but maybe not as good for endgame in comparison to live. The abilities, again, the same thing. You have ranks, which adds to the old progression feel of getting stronger, and you actually feel like a class, not just a spec. I mean, I'm all into class fantasy that Legion introduced, but here you feel more like you play a class, not a spec. You are a mage, not just a fire or a frost mage but a mage, which is a big difference as well. Then there's all the other RPG elements, which some of them I did mention before, like the weapon skills, the abilities ranks, the talents, all the different stats. I mean, what makes a classic classic, I think, is two words. The community, so the MMO part of it, and the RPG part of it, which is kind of dumb to say because that's the genre of the game, but on live, it did lose a lot of its RPG roots and is far more streamlined, which is quite a shame, and the community, well, uh, no need to say much about that, do I? But yeah, that's overall what I think about Classic so far with the demo. Obviously, I mentioned some things here which are not in the demo, but it's just my opinion on vanilla and all the changes that you should know. I for sure will be playing it, but I also don't want to miss out on future content on live WoW. I mean, Najathar, Old Gods, I still want to see all of that, so you don't have to choose one or the or another uh, both of them play with their own weaknesses and strengths so when you think about it like that it's kind of great that we're getting both of those games for the same subscription anyway guys hope you enjoyed it and as always thank you for watching remember to like and subscribe for more videos like this and check out my patreon if you wish to support the channel have a fantastic day everyone and i'll see you all next time see ya